It is an honor today to be joined on the summit by Coach Greg Fonagal, who is the head men's basketball coach at Indiana Wesleyan University. And the lead coach is, it's a big number, 500, as you have 500 wins now on your resume as the head men's basketball coach. Let's start right there. Congratulations on reaching that plateau. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, you know, for having me on and uh, just talking sports and faith and, you know, five numbers been what everybody's been talking about. Well, I, I've got six kids at home and that number seems a lot bigger than 500. Let me, let me tell you that right now. We're, we're in an overwhelming season of life. And so lots going on, but lots to be thankful for. Coach, I have five kids as well. I understand. I can still count mine on one hand though. So <laughs> I, I know you've topped me with that. I, listen, not only 500, you got 501 as you picked up a big win last night, a 30 plus point victory against the number 12 team in the country in union. A big outing there, so you haven't just rested on those laurels of 500. The season continues. You know, last night felt good. Uh, pe people have kind of asked me about, you know, what's it mean to get 500? Well, we didn't particularly play that well when we got 500. You know, we it was a quick turnaround. It was like a 12-hour turnaround from the night before. I didn't think our defense was good. So as a coach, I was so fixated on that, you know, I didn't really care about the number. But then last night we played well, thought we played on both ends of the ball. And, and when you work all week and you see the product as a coach, that's when you walk away feeling good. So 501 felt much better than 500. Let me tell you that. We're speaking now with Coach Greg Tonigal here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, coach, your journey in sports has taken along with it a journey in faith as well. And, and uh, you take opportunities on a regular basis to talk about that faith and to talk about Jesus. One of the things that is a part of the uh, stories and the game wraps with Indiana Wesleyan men's basketball is I am third. It's something that's just along with it. And it is a pledge that was renewed with the opening of this 2023-2024 season. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, you know, my passions, I mean, as I look back as just a young kid growing up in the state of Indiana, I've always been basketball in my faith. You know, my parents taught me about uh, how to follow Christ and make him the center of your life. But I was born with this innate desire to compete and to be the best. And I mean, I ate, drank and slept basketball. You know, I was your typical Indiana kid. We, we grew up on a dairy farm and uh, we would get done milking and, and sweep the floor upstairs so we could play barn ball. And uh that's all I knew. And early on, I didn't really know how those two could kind of coexist. Uh, it was like I kind of had to choose one or the other. And to be honest, I probably chose basketball early on. Basketball became an idol in my life. I was uh, real fixated on just the, the game. I still, you know, love Jesus. But I just like I said, nobody had really modeled for me, like, how do these things coexist? Does, does God care about basketball? Other than, you know, I would ask him to help me win. And God kind of took me on this journey in college um, through a season ending injury and, and pretty much a career ending injury. I tore my ACL, but then never came back. And it was three to four years of being sidelined and uh, kind of wondering what was going on that God exposed this idol, but at the same time exposed this deep love I had for him and, and, and to live on mission. And I began to see my role uh, as a leader, a spiritual leader on my team. And I didn't know it at the time, but God was planting in my heart a desire to be a coach and uh, I guess a way to be a coach. And at the same time, you know, I end up going to this camp in Missouri called Kennecuck and their motto is I am third. And it just it just hit me it's crystal clear that, you know, if I ever was become a coach, that needs to be the culture of our program where you put God first, you put other people and you put yourself third. And it, it really was like a way to rightly order your life. It wasn't to say you can't love sports and you can't love, you know, the different things God's created. It was just you can't love them more than God. And God began to show me how to put him first, put others second. And then everything began to fall into line. And it was shortly thereafter I got the head job at Indiana Wesleyan. And, and I mean, I'm 24. I know nothing. And I'm surprised they hired me, to be honest with you. But at the same time, I had this passion and a vision to be I am third and uh it's been 18 or it's been 19 years now to watch that play out and it become a basketball philosophy. And every year I feel like I'm learning more and more and that's what keeps me into coaching. You know, it's interesting that you, you mentioned that number as well, because that is a testament to what your program has done. You're the youngest men's basketball coach in the NAI NCAA division one as well. 
to make it to that 500 win plateau, doing it in just 18, 19 years. I, I have listened to some of the things that you have said and, and done online, watched some of the, the videos that have been out there that you've shared your faith, you've shared about basketball in these things. And I, I wanted to ask you about that in regard to that coaching, because, you know, as you just said, you, it, it can't be an idol. Basketball can't be an idol. You have to put God first. You have to put Jesus first place in your life. And how do you separate that then from a leadership position to be able to share your faith in, but you want to win every night as well? I'm, I'm sure that that presents its challenges in, in getting that across to the young men that are in your care. There's a lot of challenges with that. And I, and I, I don't ever want to come across as prosperity gospel either, right? I think one of the things we, we've, we love doing is engaging with other coaches and teaching them how to disciple. And one of the things I say is that, look, if, if you can learn how to effective, effectively disciple, you will become a more effective coach. And I, there's a connection there. And it's not because, uh, you know, we're going to twist God's arm into, into making us more successful. I just think it's the way he's designed the world, right? Jesus often gives parables and talks about here's how the world works. And if you surrender and submit to the ways of God, it's, it's interesting how you come in line with more success or life becomes easier because it's simply the way he's designed us. And so for me, uh, one of the things we believe in wholeheartedly is that a person's maximum potential lies in their spiritual development. Meaning if I want to help my player uh, players reach their potential, the starting place is spiritual development. It's discipleship. Um, and there's an interesting twist to that, right? It doesn't mean if a kid's jump shot's broke, he doesn't have to work hard. And if I just sit him down and read in the Bible, he's going to become a better jump shooter. But there is an element to where oftentimes kids aren't shooting well because they're fearful, they're fearful in the heart. And Jesus often engages and teaches uh, the heart. So as a, as a leader, I ought to pay attention to that kid's heart and talk about, well, maybe, maybe you're, uh, you know, you're worshiping performance or maybe you, you're stuck in comparison right now. And let's, let's talk about your identity as a, as God's chosen one. And it, and I've seen this over and over as, as young men grow in their identity and become very secure in who they are, a more confident basketball player arises. So uh, it is a tricky conversation at times, but it's such a fulfilling uh, profession when you go all in on discipleship because you're planting, you know, seeds of eternity into young men. But at the same time, I do believe you're seeing better versions of themselves come out, right? I mean, it's just like you and I, if I want to become a better husband, um, I got to become closer to Christ because as I become closer to Christ, I begin to act more like him. And as I act more like him, I become the man that God has designed my marriage to become. And it's the same thing in basketball. And so we love this process. We love learning. We love engaging with other coaches to discover ways to become better leaders. Well, Coach, I, I hope to have the opportunity to get to visit with you again in the future and, and share about both of these things and 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 wrapping up our time together. Uh, you you all didn't shy away from anyone with this schedule this season as you, you came in. I'm sure knowing there were 499 wins there that were on the docket, and the next one's going to be number 500. You have three of the t first four teams on the schedule as ranked opponents, including your next opponent, number 25, Olivet Nazarene. And that's before you even get into the Crossroads schedule. And the Crossroads League has you uh, – the first two games in conference are against ranked opponents as well. Can you talk about the opening to 23-24? To yeah, by far the toughest opening I think I've had in my 19 years. Well, we've never shied away from a, a difficult schedule because I think I've learned uh, early losses um, – definitely prepare you for late in season. And, and whereas I used to want to come out of the gates in perfection, I've realized basketball is a March sport, regardless of that's, you know, good or bad, you are judged on how you do in March. And so we want to, we want to set us, set ourselves up for that. And the, I think the only way to do that is through a difficult schedule. We want to be exposed early. Our practices have been phenomenal. I mean, all this week preparing for union, uh, our guys were locked in because, they had three all Americans on that team and, and every day watching film, you know, it got our guys attention. And so we didn't waste this week of opportunity. And I think if we would have maybe played a, a cupcake, we would have wasted this week of, of, of practice. So it continues next week with, with, with Olivet and then it's uh Rio Grande who's ranked. And then, as you said, the crossroads league, we start out with the top two teams in the league. 
Well, Coach, success to you all this season, and I know there will be success because you are putting the first things first, the proper things in the right order, and continuing with the line, I am third. Coach Greg Tonegal here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us here on the Summit today. Thanks for all you guys are doing, and I appreciate you having me.